angry guy here and black men are abandoning black women for Asians. Black men are abandoning black women for Asians. Let's just go ahead and jump right into this article. So as you can see right here, it's titled, I'm black and my wife is Japanese. Here's why raising my biracial kids in Japan is better than in the US. As you can see here is this man with his beautiful family, his Japanese wife looking all coy and his three children. And they're actually quite grown. So this is unbelievable. In 2005, I visited Japan for work and ended up meeting my wife, with whom I have two boys and a girl. My kids live, my kids' lives are filled with Japanese and African American culture, so they appreciate both. They don't have my fear of the police. I'm thankful they can enjoy a carefree childhood. As biracial Japanese stars such as Rui Hachimuri and Naomi Osaka shine on the world stage, being black and Japanese is having a moment. I ventured to Japan on a year-long contract with a with the Japan Japan Exchange and Teaching Program in 2005, which has turned into an 18-year journey marked by my marriage to a Japanese woman and the arrival of my three children, two boys and a girl. My father-in-law asked how I would handle our children being bullied for not being 100% Japanese. I said, who better to teach a child about discrimination than a black man from the US. I surmised I would have to contend with this at some point. As an English teacher in Japan, I saw students teased for their differences. Working as an actor, I witnessed discrimination during a TV shoot where Japanese talent portrayed a biracial, biracial character, which underlined some deep cultural misunderstandings. And he's talking about someone who had black on their face, black makeup on to portray a, a black person. And last year, a biracial teenager was barred from graduating for wearing braids. To be clear, though, that's not discrimination. In Japan, it's a literally a conformist society. You know, even I mean, they literally mandate the types of undergarments that young people are allowed to wear to school. So that's how that's just how serious Japan is. In a nation known for rich traditions and respect, attitudes towards those who are not ethnically Jap Japanese vary. I was acutely aware of the need to prepare my children for slights and microaggressions, not only in Japan, but also on a global scale. Yet the reality subverted many of my expectations. Our tranquil suburban enclave in Satama, which I call the New Jersey of Japan, offers my children a typical Japanese lifestyle. Our home is a mix of both cultures. We have a kota kotatsu tama ta tatami room, and shoji, which walls, with walls sporting African masks and original artwork, some by black artists, including a black Jesus painting. When my kids were younger, I ensured they had action figures and dolls, such as Finn from Star Wars, that also that looked like them. Our eldest, now a high school student, bro, performs hip hop and break dancing, reads manga, and watches Common Rider. Damn, bro, I'm so jealous. They still have Kamen Rider in Japan, and we don't have that here in America. Y'all, we need to dip. Like, seriously? Like, seriously? Like, like people, like, bro, if you're, like, into anime and Japanese, bro, we just need to dip, because we're not even getting the best of both worlds. Like, PlayStation 5 costs, like, 450 for, like, the disc version in Japan, and we're paying, like, 550 in America. Like, seriously, we just need to leave, man. We just need to leave. Like, Mayumi's always talking about sending her kids, like, to Japan, just, like, to, you know, so they don't grow up with their nonsense here in america and i'm getting it more and more now he was voted student government president in junior high our middle our middle child aspires to be a professional soccer player with multiple multiple high schools courting his talent bro nah 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 wow he enjoys playing online pc games with his friends watching one piece and fishing our youngest does jazz and hip-hop dance has taken show do lessons enjoys the company of girlfriends she has known since kindergarten and loves anime and youtube bro there bro this is insane look guys look at his family look at this man's family look at his family look at the food his wife prepared his wife is hooking that up all right and look at his opportunity this japanese wife right here she ain't messing around 
All right. She's taking everything the black woman had, didn't appreciate. I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Western women, women in Western society, they will no longer have access to these men. They will no longer have access to these men. I'm being straight with y'all. I used to be this type of guy. I'm not anymore. I am not. I'm the type of dude that's going to, that if I mess around with one, I'm going to have a harem because I know my worth. I can't be, I can't be locked down to just one woman. It's, it's going to be very, very hard for me. All right. That's my mental state. And there's a lot of men like me right now that will not, that will never get married, never commit, never have children that will go around that, go that route. And, you know, I talk to MK Fitness sometimes and he thinks that most of the passport bros are just traditionalist men who want a wife and Nah, bro. That's a lot of the guys who are leaving. But as this thing grows, as the passport kings grows, you're going to see a lot of dudes who are not going to commit to one woman. All right. Because they're going to be like, I know my value. I know my worth. They won't have access. Women will no longer have access to these types of men, men that are loyal, men that want that want a family, that men that want commitment. They're not going to have access to these to these men anymore. These guys are going to be very, very hard to come by. These guys are going to be literally like gold. Guys that are not trying to play games. Guys that are serious. You know, guys that are not childish. They're not going to get access to these guys anymore. They're going to get access to guys like me and worst. All right, they're. I'm, I'm one of the better ones. I'm one of the better ones because a lot of these dudes. You know, they're just going to go overseas. They're going to sell these women a dream. And then these women, are, they're going to get what they want. And then they're going to leave when they're done. And they're never going to hear from them again. All right. They're not even going to tell these women their first, their, their real name. They're like, hi, my name is Michael. His name is not Michael. His name is James or Jackson. All right. But he's going to say, that's for, hi, my name is Michael. And that's, and he's going to get in, get out. And that's the end of it. And if she has, and if, if she has a baby when he's done, when he leaves, she has a baby. But that baby is never going to find their father. That baby is never going to find their father. That baby will never find them because he's not going to be in any in any DNA databases. She doesn't know what his actual name is. All right. And she has so she has really nothing to work on. And the phone number, the phone number that he gave to her, that was from a that's from a prepaid cell phone that he picked up somewhere in Osaka. OK, so so she's so she's out of luck. She will never see that man again. And no one will ever see that. None of these people will see this that man again. All right, because he will never go back to the same place twice. This is the reality of things. And a lot, as I, as I said, like I said, women will no ha longer have access to good men like these. All right, that's really how it is. They all attend public schools, and like other kids in Japan, they frequent the mall, favor ra ramen and melon pan, and belt out tunes at karaoke. With Japanese as their primary language, like their peers, they see English as acad an academic subject, not, not a tool for daily communication. I am their conduit to speak English. They help me with my Japanese, and I often share linguistic nuances with them. My oldest son sang a song with the N-word. So he sang a song with the N-word, which offered an opportunity for us to delve into the words history and implications in Japan. This slur carries little weight, and its use, its use is non-existent, a stark cultural contrast between the United States and Japan. My children don't have the same fear of police interactions that I do. In Japan, I do not wear the same emotional armor as I do in the U.S., and my children have, my children ha have not had to bear that burden. We do not fear police interactions and have, and have not to, had to initiate the talk addressing profiling, and harassment. Unfortunately, they have not encountered scrutiny based on their appearance or endured unwanted stops by officers. My youngest son and his friends were approached by a police officer for after violating bicycle rules. The officer focused on those in the middle of the street, fearing my son, who was riding along the side. This in part is due to our suburban residents. We acknowledge that when we visit the U.S. or even sometimes outside of our community, including Tokyo, they will face a starkly different reality compared with their experiences in Saitama. My children's physical appearance may differ from their peers, but their internal identity is deeply rooted in Japanese lifestyle alongside a sense of their African-American heritage. They enjoy a carefree childhood experience, un untainted by the need to grow up too fast. My Blackenese family embodies a fusion of cultures as they navigate their individual journeys enriched by the best of both worlds. Guys, I've talked about this. I've said that this is the end.
end of it. These women will no longer have access to these men anymore in Western society. And, you know, right now it's the black guys that are doing this in droves. But when the white guys start jumping onto this thing in droves, guys, right now the black guys doing this are costing the economy billions of dollars. Billions of dollars, like $5 billion with just the existing passport kings leaving Western society. When that number increases substantially, that we're talking like 30 to $50 billion. When the white guys start doing this in droves, and it's not just the white guys, but when the white guys start doing this in droves, then we're talking about anywhere from 200 to $500 billion a year leaving Western society. And that's only for like a small fraction of men, something like 30 million men. All right. When this thing hits, when this thing becomes not only normal and it starts to become a, it become a tradition, that's a trillion dollars a year leaving Western society, leaving America. That's a trillion dollars a year. OK, America cannot lose that kind of money. And it doesn't matter because they can start putting up all the taxes that they want and all this other nonsense. But it's not going to stop the men from leaving. The only thing that they're going to be able to do is, is try to use travel bans. OK, because if they try to if they try to tax men too crazy, dudes will just find other ways to make money. They will start to find other ways to make money off the books and they'll and that's how they'll live. They, all right. They will cut back to, to they'll cut back to only what they need. And that's it. And they will find other ways to make money that cannot be taxed. And this is one of the reasons why the government is going to be focusing more on cracking down on, on bank accounts cracking down on anything you have and, and and potentially introducing a digital a digital dollar where they can basically snatch it from you at any given moment they can keep track of your transactions how you spend your money where you're spending your money and they can snatch it from you at any given moment that's the digital dollar right there and and and, and when it becomes so so mass that these guys are taking all of their money out of the country and the immigrants that are coming to western society that they have to import in to to, to, to fill the jobs that Western men won't do anymore. They're also taking the money they make in Western society and sending that outside of the country as well. It's going to be unbelievable. And with, with 50% with, 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 with of all women said to be childless and single, sing, sing, single come 2030, it's going to be substantial. It's going to be absolutely substantial when you have all these single women and the welfare state can't support them. And they don't have the plan B guys anymore. You have to understand that a lot of simps that are going over are going overseas right now. A lot of these guys in, in the Philippines are simps, but a lot of them are simps. All right. So the simp economy, while it may look like there's no effects happening on the simp economy right now, even that economy is going to shift overseas. It's going to shift overseas or it's going to shift online. Whereas these simps turn to chatbots instead of only, only fools models, bio babes, to interact with. So companies are going to be collecting this. They're going to let these girls have that money. You think if they could set up a chat bot and have these sims pay a chat bot, they're going to let these bio babes stress them out. Mm -mm, mm -mm, they're going to cut them out. They're going to cut them out. People are going to be shocked when only fool starts transitioning to a platform that does not, that does that prefers to not have bio babes on there because chat bots are much more feasible. It removes any issues, any any misunderstandings. It's it's and it's and it's more tra it's perfectly transactional based, and and it cuts out a lot of the bad things associated with the platform. Like at some point, it may literally become too expensive to keep women on the platform, and much cheaper and le and, and 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 better from a legal and social aspect to bar women from using the platform that they helped make popular and just make the platform based around only you know based around cyber girls cuz this is where this is where it's headed these sims aren't loyal i've said it once i'll say it again these women don't understand these sims aren't loyal all right these guys are thirsty addicts and they'll get their fix wherever they can get it and they want to get it as easy as possible and if they can just go into if they can go and get it from the metaverse, if they get it from a chatbot, if they can get it from a from a robo babe, because I've said this already that a lot of men in the future, like we're talking about 10 years, in 10 years, a lot of men will start to be, are going to be be identifying as robosexuals, and what that means is that they will only have intimate relationships, just not not even just physical, but also only intimate physical and intimate relationships with only with only with only uh artificial intelligence and robots
Black men are abandoning black women for Asians, and I don't feel bad for them at, at all. Shout out to Mayumi. Shout out to Mayumi. I actually recently heard from her husband. I got his email. Wow, that was you really shared a lot with me. I'm going to have to respond to him once I get a chance to. I've been kind of lazy with, him, with my responses, but it just shows a lot of insight into how these men are going overseas, finding these women. You know, for example, Mayumi is a physician and you know, it may suck to say it like this, but most women who are doctors would not date someone or marry someone who, who used to be within the military and now has a security company. They would not, they would not deal with someone like that. They would, they would want another doctor. They would want a Chad. They would want a guy making at least a million dollars a year. I don't know how much, how much money this guy's making, but they wouldn't sell it. They would not settle for him because they would blame. Because first off, even if he was making a considerable amount of money, they would also look at the kind of work he's doing and they would turn around and say, yeah, I don't want a guy like that. I don't want a guy like that. You know, for example, a man can make a million dollars a year as a janitor, right? Because he has his own janitor business. And guess what? His own cleaning business. And, you know, a, you know, a woman could say to a guy, like, what do you do for a living? He says, I'm a janitor. She will get up and walk away immediately, immediately, because she doesn't want to be associated with a janitor. And if somehow she accepts being in a relationship with him, trust me, that is only so that she can extract as much wealth and resources from this man as possible and then get out because there is no way in the world she is staying married to a janitor. She is only there to get what she wants to get and then get out. This is the thinking of modern day woman. women. They don't love you. They only want what you can do for them. They only like what you can do for them. And that's it. And men have to wake up and walk away, walk away from this reality, walk away from the nonsense, walk away from the games, because these women don't actually like you. They just want what you have so they can get it and then get out. Like I said, a woman is planning her divorce before she plans her wedding. What do you guys think regarding all of this? I want to hear your thoughts. I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away, and cheers.